don't think they are the same word. What are the people saying? Uh, five local government out of the Tajiri local government is more than many states in the north. The government is booming. Where is the government booming? Bomb blast in Abuja. Don't you have security? Why are we fighting? President should not just sit in Abuja or in Asokoro or wherever he lives. They are not the local They know them. Men cannot be there and be there at the same time. The life of the citizens, community need to be protected. It's can't work out. Bring the message of peace. Let there be proper devolution of power from the center. The center is too powerful. The people, only on Core TV News. All right, it's a beautiful Saturday morning in the city of Lagos. Thanks for joining us on the program Core Digest and Core TV News. I'm your host, Brownson Owana. And of course, the words in the mouth of all Nigerians is bring back our girls, those abducted girls. We need them back wherever they are. And of course, um, right here on Core TV News, we are also in the, um, in, in the same cry asking for the release of the abducted girls. Welcome on board. Today on the program, we'll be looking at a lot of issues. We'll start from the Ekiti elections that have been penciled down for June 21. There'll be a lot of controversy rocking the elections. Last two weeks ago, we had one of um, the governorship, governorship candidates, um, person of Kole Ajayi. He was here, and of course, he made some marks and some comments about some of the happenings in Ekiti states. And today on the program, we are, we are having we would be looking at, um, we'll be hearing from another camp as far as the election is concerned, but now um, it's coming from the PDP candidate. Uh, we've got um, their representative in the studio with me. And of course, still looking at the issue of security on the program today, uh, we'll be having some vigilante group coming in to tell us um, what um, they are all about and of course, and what they portray as far as um, Nigerian security is concerned and of course joining me this morning is barrister Woshini Ajayi is the deputy director general for Shake campaign organization and of course former attorney general and commissioner for justice good morning sir thanks for joining us on the program thank you viewers it's a pleasure to be here absolutely and of course um, also joining me on the program Olatsumbo Sun Aihonsu I hope Aihonsu I I uh, joining me I beg your pardon for modeling your name but uh, good to have you on the program thank you so much all right, uh, we, we are looking at um, Ekiti this morning, and um, we'll be. Uh, let me start with you, Commissioner. Um, before you left Ekiti, um, how was the atmosphere like? Was it tense, uh, peaceful, or yeah, how, how was it like this morning? Um, before I left Ekiti State yesterday, up till now, it's peaceful. The political parties are busy campaigning for votes of the electorates in using various methods. Rallies, door-to-door -door campaign, word to word campaign, local government to local government campaign, using network methods. So, so far, I think uh, it's peaceful up till this morning. But there have been the caveat that since we have been running this campaign, the ruling party, the APC, have been, have been, for reasons of fear, for reasons of desperation, they have been initiating unnecessary violence on other political parties. Specifically, the Labour Party, we are Honorable uh, Poyemba Middle is the candidate and the PDP. In all the instances recorded so far, the ruling party has been the aggressor. And, and the fact is clear from the record in the police. And I stand to be contradicted. Up to date, all people who have been charged to court for violate related offenses in this campaign so far were all members of the ruling APC. How do you how do you justify that? That is why I'm seeing. That is why I'm seeing that um, I'm a lawyer. I go to that, I go to a kitty court on daily basis, and I'm also the legal advisor to the party. I have the records that so far over 20 people shot to Ekiti State Court for violent related offenses are members of the APC, including close 
advisors to the governor. One of them, the special advisor to the governor on internal security matters, called the Jadishok. And the leader of the OPC in the state, Niya Dedipe, called Apache. These are all known very close aides of the governor in the state. They have all been shy to court for violent related offenses. Not only that, the House of Assembly member of the party in the Murray local government. And there were seven others, close aides, party members, functional party members of, of the party, have been shy to court for murder. And that, that was why in, in, the, in an open day uh, world meeting of the Labour Party, these people had their country in broad daylight to go there and gone down to people. Now, let, let me hold And you. not only that, at Erigenio, the hometown of the chairman of the APC in the state, because some people are defecting from APC to PDP, they went there and gone to people down. The chairman of the party have been charged to court. These are this this and some other people for murder. Now, how, how do you react so, to the allegations? So, so this, that? These, these are facts that are not controverted. How, how do you, and not how, do you react, how do you react to the fact that um, some of these um, crises, uh, some of these violence, are stage managed from um, from parts of, uh, some um, political party to get pity? It's not possible. It's not possible to stage manage such crises because there, there, there are people who are trained to investigate crime. The police are trained to investigate all these occurrences. They went into the fire. Even the police headquarters in Abuja set up special investigation committee panel to go into all these issues that I've just raised. So if, if umpires, police are seen as umpires, when into this, the issue of state managing the crisis will never arise. Let me cite an example. Let me cite an example. Our campaign office, that is Governor, I have a campaign office at Adibayo. The governor's, that was around 5.30 p.m. The governor cover was coming from campaign and as he was going. There are two, there are two buses which we have reported severally to the Commissioner of Police, carrying arms and ammunition and talks, constantly in the cover of, of His Excellency the Governor. So, as these people were going, the other side of the road, they started firing at the campaign office of Governor Yofayoshi. They even turned back later and faced that building directly and sprayed it with bullets. And one of the attendants there was seriously wounded. So when, when, when and they now rush to the press, the APC in Ikitise have a, 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 a penchant for doing something by rushing to the press and accuse other people of doing it. They now rushed to the press and said the governor's cover was attacked. So the police now investigated and discovered that um, the, 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 OC op the AC operations was in the governor's convoy, leading the governor's security convoy. And he said this thing did not happen, that it was the unguided, unguided uh, security or the talks in the governor's convoy, led by a chief security advisor. No, no, let, let that me did it. And they have been shot to court for that. Let me hold you. You said um, so, um, in the early part of that morning, um, um, some members of the PDP campaign group saw um, the, the governor's. Um, or that um, group with arms and ammunition. At that point, why didn't the PDP raise an alarm? We did it. We, were, we have, uh, even at the security meeting, a security meeting held with all the governor's experience. His Excellency Dr. Peter Yodele Fayoshi told the CP in that meeting that are you not aware that the governor has two buses carrying arms and ammunition with talks? We gave him his, the number. So, we, there was nothing we could do beyond that to report to the security agencies, including the ESS, which we did. But the problem is that, um, you know, the governor, because of his constitutional position, 
is also, is somehow given some respect. The, 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 that is why you may not be able to blame the police totally. If the governor is in the knowledge of some of these things, it's given it protection, and it's given them protection, it may be quite difficult for the police to exercise it. And that, but that is not an excuse for the police to. Because if an executive governor who is supposed to be the chief security officer of the state is protecting crime, is protecting criminals, the commissioner of police should be bold enough to advise him on that. And that is what we have been agitating for, that the commissioner of police, the security agencies, they should be bold enough to advise the governor to stop sheeding the talks that are following his campaign all about. Okay, now it is on record that um, uh, the, uh, as it stands, AKT State has produced more professors than every other state in the country. And then the big question that has always been arising, why AKT State prone to violence? Let me come to you, uh, to Boston. Uh, why would you say AKT State is always prone to, prone to violence when it comes to election period? Uh, well, uh, AKT State and uh, Undo State, you know, when it was actually carved out of the old Ondo state. And uh, in political discourse, as far as Nigeria is concerned, people believe the flashpoint of political activities, political sagacity, you know, lies in the old Ondo state. In fact, people believe that the lion heart of Southwest politics, Southwest politics, you know, it's in the old Undo state. In fact, people believe that an average Ikiti, you know, indigent is arrogant and stubborn. That is a belief, you know, among uh, Nigerians. Now about violence. Well, I would not really say, you know, Ikiti is the only state in the Southwest that is notorious. Ibadan is also to, 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 to some extent. And uh, we cannot isolate that from the way we are practicing politics, you know, especially in this century. Politics has become a do or die affair. A lot of people are desperate because, one, the state has become the major avenue to be enriched. The state has become a major avenue to get a gotten wet. There is so much money that is allocated to government at all levels. So much money to spend that are legally appropriated for. Is the money not supposed to be for the people? I, 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 I'm, I'm still coming to that. The money is supposed to be for, for instance, now on security vote, a governor is not supposed to account. Is a governor, a state governor is not supposed to account for how he or she spends security votes. But what is this security vote spent for? So, going back to the issue of violence in Ikiti, like I said earlier on, we cannot isolate it from the desperation that has become the value that underpin and underline political party activities, partisan politics in Nigeria today. In the old Western region, we all remember what happened during the uh, federal election crisis of 1964, Western region election crisis of 1965. We also we can also recollect what happened in the Second Republic, particularly between the two leading political parties at that time, the defunct National Party of Nigeria and the defunct Unity Party of Nigeria in the southwest, <coughs> southwest states, particularly states like Old Ondo State and Old Oyo State, where the Defund Unity Party of Nigeria lost in 1983 the governorship seat in those two states. Late Chief Michael Ajasin lost the governorship seat. Now, coming back to Ikiti State, what, what, what would you say is always the problem? Because um, it looks like every time there's an election, there's always something to look out for in Ikiti. Eh, well, traditionally, traditionally, like I told you earlier on, traditionally, Ikiti people are militants. 
a militancy in the ten, in, in sense of they are they are tough my they are tough talking tough tough talking people traditionally an average traditional politician an average equity indigenous is always tough talking Even me. then secondly secondly which is more which is which is which is more pronounced and more widespread the values that underpin and underline Nigerian politics now is desperation. Okay, let me let me hold you, let, me, let me get your response from Barista. Yes, I, I I wouldn't agree that the people are arrogant and stubborn, and this has been responsible for violence in the state. I would rather say, the people because they are well educated, they will resist shitting. They will resist election manipulation. Equity people can easily make up their mind about where they are going. And when they do, it will be very difficult for you to change their mind. Because look at this election that is going on. The government there had made a lot of mistakes, which we in the PDP are capitalizing upon. They had problems with the teachers, whom they were humiliating to take unnecessary exams with so many rough shots between them on resort up till now. The local government workers whom they set up a consultant to be taking the attendance in an attempt to reduce the, the, the workers' trade there through retrenchment. These people now embark on programs that the workers see as humiliating to them. They come in the morning, they come in the afternoon, they come in the evening to take attendance of the workers, thereby frustrating them and humiliating them. Then we now have, we now have the, the, the civil servant generally. Activities in the ministry are completely paralyzed because there are no running grants. Even to buy newspaper, to buy biro, is almost impossible. And to worsen the situation for this present government, all the all the contractors working in the state are non-indigents of the state, imported into the state, include ordinary carpenters, bricklayers, musicians, lawyers that are having government brief, in my own area jurisdiction, they are all non-indigents of the state. So with uh, over 25 billion bond, with over 400 billion allocations to the state, the people are completely impoverished. There is no money in the state. As a result, Nigerians will not be surprised that that government will be woefully defeated in the next election. And if I'm lying on, 20, on June 22nd, when the result is out, you will see what I'm saying. Now, uh, so, so as a result of that, the government has become jittery. They have become desperate to remain in office. So they have employed unorthodox tactics unorthodox tactics which has resulted into unnecessary violence, being unleashed on the people. And this is already backfiring on them because it will, make, it will not change the mind of the people of the state. And when the, when the cabinet is in the state, when they call them for a meeting about two days ago, all these issues were made clear to the cabinet that talk to the government. Talk to them that they, that they are aggressors. So they, if people, they are not aggressive, they are not stubborn. It's only they resist in position of what we are not supposed to do. We will not. It's not a state you can just think you can you can use money to buy them over. You can use money to buy them over when they have made up their mind. So we are not stubborn. We are not. Uh, we are not aggressive. We are just people who are intelligent, who wants to defend their right. Who does not want to be cheated? That is the now, the, the, okay, the, the, the now, reason why. Just let me hold you. Let, let me just. Hold, I want to. I want to add. I want to. Um, now, um, some times ago, we 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 had the, talking about homegrown. I think it's very very important because there's there's also an allegation that um, even some of the governorship candidates that are contesting for these elections uh, in Ekiti states, uh, most of them are not homegrown governors. As a matter of fact, they don't understand the terrain. They don't understand. Um, uh, some of the major, the core values of the Kitty State. Um, 
two weeks ago we had um, one of the governorship candidates we were fortunate to have him in the studio with us. Um, I'm going to play this, um, the comments he made about um, homegrown and um, some things that has to do with what you just said. And then when we come back, we'll take your reaction. Let's listen to the interview by Kole Ajayi. In terms of development, Ekiti people has not really done bad uh, at all. They have not done bad. Ekiti State, no doubt, it, as far as Nigeria is concerned, have produced um, the most amount of professors. But looking at it now, does it reflect in terms of elections? If Ekiti State are that learned, why can't the people conduct themselves when it comes to election period? Uh, yes, that is where we are coming from. What is happening in Ekiti? Since 1999 to date, people that have been coming to so pretend as governors have been people that have not gone through the terrain. They are people that are alien to the system, sovereign in court. They are people that they don't possess the core values of equity from right from 1999 to date. They are not homegrown. So they are people that sort of infect the Ekiti people with a lot of wrong values, like corruption, like uh, not having integrity, like um, all these uh, money politics, like um, a lot of negative values have been introduced by people that always sojourn outside that when they want to become governors they come around and of course they start governing so they are the ones that have polluted the values of equity and that is where we are coming from all right barista you you, you heard that yes. uh, that's clearly stated how would you react to that would you, yes. would you want to let, agree let, with let that? me let me let me react simply that ayofayo is not affected by that comment because everybody in equity said and nigeria generally know that is a grassroots man, and that is why it's coming back. Ordinary man on the street have access to Ayo Fayoshi. Be you a be, be you a market woman, be you a Nokada rider, be you a bully seller, be you a rice seller. They are all they all, they all have access. All of them have his phone number, and his strength lies on those people. After leaving office for eight years, if you see the crowd in his rallies. Who are, who are naturally mobilized by themselves, you will see what I'm talking about. That that comment, which I agree to some extent is correct, does not affect Ayofayoshi because it's known, not only by the people, by every politician in this country that Ayofayoshi is a grassroots politician. And that is why so many governors, about six governors, has gone after, after Rude Christ after him. Why is he so popular? His popularity is beyond measure. So he's not affected by that. But I will agree with him to some extent, because that is what is affecting the president governor. He has never played politics in the Kitty State. He has never been there for anything in his life. It was just a concussion from Lagos and imposed on ACA and then. The candidate that won the apparently then, Prince Dayuadi Yayo is now with us, was short change and was brought in from nowhere. So, and that is why it's have a problem with the people. It's not relating to the people. People don't, people say they don't even know his face, apart from the television. It doesn't come down, it doesn't see them, it doesn't move with them. How, how did he win the election? Now, let me, let me chip in this. I, let, let, let me tell you, let, 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 let me, me tell you, let me answer that question. You know, a lot of issues went into his election. A lot of issues went into his election. Number one, when Ayofayo Oche was forcefully removed from office, some strange people took over PDP. And elements from ACN were drafted to take over the governorship in, 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 in PDP. Uh, governor Shegoni was not a member of our party. He was in ACN as a gubernatorial candidate. He was drafted as an element because they said all the structures in PDP were Fayoshi and they don't want Fayoshi man to take over. Shegoni was drafted there. He came, he came third, distant third in the primary. But the president then imposed him as, the, uh, as, a, as, a, as our candidate. He did not stop there. After winning the ticket now, all other fire share uh, supporters that won House of Assembly tickets in 13 of the, local, uh, the assembly constituencies, Governor Shegun withdrew the ticket from them. 
and PDP lost in all those places. Because the popular candidate that could have won the election for PDP was short change. Some other people that were not known of people were small going on the eve of election. Who changed them? The, 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 it was engineered by the, uh, the gubernatorial candidate of PTP then, Governor Shegone. And you know the party has the right to say we want to change our candidate at, uh, within the speculated time in Nineveh. So as a result of that, you will discover that uh, the 13 aspirants that were suffering uh, of his supporters, that were removed to contest the House of all of them lost. And the election, we went into the election, it was virtually ACA versus ACA. Shegone and Kayo, the family, were virtually ACA versus ACA. They managed to win the election. It was declared and it was there for three and a half years. Okay, let, let, let me And it, it, it was reversed. Let, and you let, know let the issue of let me hold the how it was, it was reversed too is another moment. story. Moment, let, let, let me get here. Now, like, I about. wanted to say that, uh, you know, just to add to what I said earlier, you can be positively arrogant and you can be negatively arrogant. Okay. Maybe I should put it that way. Okay. The Ekiti people are positively arrogant on their values. On principle. On principles. I agree with you. I agree with you. But then, the leadership terrain, what we have had, like, I mean, to now, to, to relate it to what Barista has just said, we, we are running a political process that you cannot divorce candidacy from the party structure. Now, there is so much undemocratic practices and principles in most of our, virtually all our political parties. That is the reason why a governor, for instance, or a candidate that may want to move with the generality of the masses of people may find it difficult to do so because of the structure of the party that produces him or her. For instance, I know that as one of the virtues, one of the virtues of uh, um, the candidate of the P P People's Democratic Party, Mr. Ayofayoshi, he, he is a grassroots person. No, but then the, no. Let, 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 let me let, let, let me finish. Okay. He's a grassroots person. I know that. And but that's what what may work against him. The People's Democratic Party, as it were, is a party that is run mainly by Godfatherism. But the allegation... But by Godfatherism. The, the allegation here... Let, let, let me learn. Let no, me learn. No, let the, me learn. No, let me learn. Let, let me hold you. The allegation here is the fact that um, the state is going through this violence because we have more of people that are not homegrown. Hello. That's the argument. There is no state in Nigeria where you are having an election that you will not have any form of violence. There is no state in Nigeria. It's not peculiar to Ekiti. It's not peculiar to Ekiti state. It's a national phenomenon. And the reason why it is so is because of money politics. Yes. We are, we are running a political process or a political system that is not valuating, that is not woven around ideas and ideologies. Politics of desperation. People are desperate. There's so much money. And if you have brought in so much money, uh, you are not, you are not giving anything at the end of the day, you, you will employ all kinds of means in, in order to get something. In Ogun State, uh, that is just a digression anyway. You know people have lost their lives. Politicians have lost their lives in the course of wanting to be elected in the government office, of government offices. People have been killed in very strange circumstances. Politicians now. Dick Dina, for instance. A, a leading light of the opposition in those days, he lost his lives in very questionable circumstances. Fuisha Williams. In Lagos. In Lagos State. He wanted to be the governor of that state. He was also murdered in very mysterious circumstances. And they are, we are, and so on, and we can go on and on and on and on. What I'm trying to say, in essence, is that the, 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 the problem Mr. Yofai Yoshi may have, may have, may not really be with an average indigenous of Ekiti, but maybe with the people, People's Democratic Party, as he had when he first contested now, okay. during his first time. Absolutely. You know, the problem he had was not with the Ekiti people. There. 
he had problem with the godfathers in the party and those godfathers are still there who are the godfathers? i've been issue who are the godfathers? no we we, we, we not we may not mention you know we may not mention names here i, I like i like to know I'll we may not we of course are. We, are, we are not going to mention names here <laughs> Maybe, but they are still there. Maybe I should ask barrister. They barrister, are still there. Who are the godfathers? They are still there. Now, he, 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 but but what, what, one of, one of the pluses he, he may have is that some of them have wittingly or wittingly crossed to the other side. Okay, let, let, let me hold you now, barrister. Um, I, I, he has raised a very issue. I, I think I'd like yes. to know who the godfathers are. Um, as 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 he has said. We will not mention names here, but let me let me see. It was right to some extent, but because it's not at the core of the PDP politics now, you may not know the details that those godfathers that they have been rendered important. The president of this country, President Jonathan Billy, good luck is from PDP. He wants to run election next year as president. He's aware that in the Southwest there is no state controlled by his party. He cannot play politics of Ayo Ayo here alone in the election. He is playing politics of PDP that PDP must center Southwest. So that is an advantage that overreading the sentimental issues of any godfather. And the, in that instance, all the necessary logistics supports supposed to be given to a party, democratically allowed within the law. Now, the godfather you're talking are about, are going, they, are, going, are, 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 they, are they a kitty Are going to be given, they are within and outside the kitty state. They are within and outside the my, my friend is right. For instance, now, Look at the circumstances under which Governor Fayoshi left office. People thought he was impeached. I was there to the Nikina Commissioner for Justice there. He was not impeached. He was, there was just a coup organized from the top there. That's why I'm saying he was partially right. Because let me tell you the scenario that happened there. The House of, our House of Assembly had been brought over by, 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 by the forces against us there. And they now raise some impeachment allegations against the governor. And what they are supposed to do if they meet one third majority is that they ask the chief judge to set up an impeachment panel they, 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 to investigate that allegation. The chief judge then, Honorable uh, Justice Kayo uh, set up a seven member impeachment panel. And those member impeachment panel exonerated him. And the constitution says that is the end of impeachment. The, the speaker then, late Friday, I did mean, now said he was not satisfied with that provision of the law. On his own, remove the chief judge against what the constitution says. I wrote a letter then to the chief justice of Nigeria, Beguri, on the appointment of the legal appointment of Honorable Joseph Saladi Jana as active chief judge. And I was personally with the, 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 act, the, the chief judge of Nigeria, the Honorable uh, Justice Beguri, who said, I'm not even going to reply your letter. I'm going to reply the letter of uh, Justice Aladdin Jano asking for permission to act as acting CJ. And he wrote that letter saying that you don't have capacity to act as an acting CJ because there is a society CJ who has not been removed by the AJC. And if you do anything, uh, the, the cause of your appointment as acting CJ, it will be null and void and it will be of no effect. He went up there and said that there was an impeachment. So there was no impeachment. All right, let, 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 me, let me hold you. Let me hold you down. We'll, we'll take a break for the news on the air. When we come back after the news, we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be having a, a critical assessment of all the governorship candidates as far as uh, the 2015 election is concerned. News on the air is up next with Sabina Izoko. Stay with us and don't go anywhere. The program continues right after the news.
Core TV News, expanding your view.